Welcome back everybody to Keenan K TV. In today's video, I want to talk about Conor McGregor's future in the sport. Are there still many great things in store for him or have we seen the best already? Who could Conor McGregor fight and how would he do in those matchups? We will be discussing all of that in today's video. And if you would like more work from me, be sure to subscribe and drop a like on the video. So with that being said, let's jump right into the video. I've seen this notion going around that Conor McGregor is completely done with the sport of MMA. He's only in it for a big fight. He's not committed to anything. He doesn't really mean anything. He doesn't care if he wins or loses because he's rich. He's this, he's that. And when it comes to my opinion on this, we have to understand where it all began. I don't necessarily agree with the things that they say, but there is some truth to what they say. Maybe not to the extent at which they make it out to be, but I would have to still be real with Conor McGregor and be real with the viewers. We know that Conor McGregor lost to Habib. He lost his world title shot, he lost his lineal status as the lightweight champion of the world, making Habib the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Now before even all of this came to be, the talks that are going around today were really already present after his fight with Eddie Alvarez becoming the double champion in the UFC, the first ever two-way world champion simultaneously. Now what makes me say this? Now let's just take a look at this. Before going into a fight with Eddie Alvarez, the activity and the intensity at which Conor McGregor continuously evolved and stepped up in competition, stepped up in the antics, in the hype. Every time Conor McGregor would go into a new fight, everything would just become bigger. Going into the fight with Jose Aldo, there was a big international tour. It was just one of the biggest promoted fights ever. Unfortunately, Jose couldn't make it. Chad Mendes stepped in and that in itself was a big fight nonetheless. It was still a fight that would happen in the featherweight division whether Conor McGregor defeated Jose at that point without fighting Chad. Because let's just assume Conor McGregor would have defeated Jose in the first fight. He would have probably ended up fighting Chad Mendes regardless. So in the end, it was just something that would play in his favor in the long run because that would just add another big name, another very great name in the featherweight division on his resume. He goes in there and defeats Chad Mendes, raises the belt, becomes the interim featherweight champion of the world. Now the fight with Jose Aldo is even bigger. So in the end, it all really just played into his favor. The fight that was scheduled to happen the first time around is now bigger. And the performance of Conor McGregor on that night was just something unforgettable. Probably the most shocking title fight ever to occur in the UFC happened that night. Defeating the 10 year undefeated Jose Aldo in just only 13 seconds with a left hand down the middle. Conor at that point he was invincible. He got to a point in the UFC, got to a point in popularity that was just unheard of in the UFC. Yes we obviously had guys like Brock Lesnar, fighters like Ronda Rousey who were a very big spectacle in their own right but nobody ever did what he did if we are going to take a look at ronda rousey ronda didn't have an opponent that went 10 years undefeated that had the legitimacy and fear factor as jose aldo did so out of brock and ronda connor was the guy he was the most legit guy out of them all and by that point what could conor mcgregor do next We could assume that he would have been able to go in there and have a rematch with Jose Aldo, but the way I see it is, what would Conor McGregor have proven in the rematch that he did not in the first fight? Not to say that he's running away or anything like that, but really, what would he really have proven? It would just be a repeat of the first fight and it would just be a derail or a slowdown in momentum to bigger and better things. And that is something that Conor McGregor has always set out to do. Every fight is a step up. There hasn't really been a moment in Conor McGregor's career where the next fight would somewhat be a plateau. Maybe against Nate Diaz, but that in itself was something that would up itself again. Whether that was intentional or not, that was just the way the fight played out. But even before going into a fight with Jose, he clearly stated that he had eyes on the 155 pound world title in the UFC. Who do you predict is going to have it? I think Khabib will get the lightweight belt. 
He had visions of replicating his success in Cage Warriors, where he became a two-divisional world champion at the same time. So in Connor's mind, having a rematch with Jose Aldo isn't necessarily one fight that he would be hyped up to do again. But in the state that he is in currently, that may be a potential fight that could happen this year in 2019. So stay tuned to hear about that later on in the video. But continuing on with the story, Connor, after becoming the undisputed unified featherweight champion of the world, he just wanted to fight for the lightweight belt. He goes in there, schedules to fight RDA for the belt. Unfortunately, RDA happens to pull out and he has a replacement in Nate Diaz. Another fighter who was pretty established in the lightweight division at least, in which a victory over him in the long run would just be another good name on his resume. Unfortunately, that didn't really happen to be a lightweight. The fight took place at 170, the welterweight division which is two divisions higher than featherweight. So that in itself is a big spectacle, a big nuance, a big really eye-catching factor to the fight. And given Nate Diaz's personality and Conor McGregor's, the build-up to the fight was just nuclear, it was just very toxic and everybody was just very immersed in the build-up. And I also want to touch upon the mentality in which Conor McGregor really presented himself through everything. Now obviously, defeating Chad Madness in two rounds, defeating Jose Aldo in just 13 seconds, essentially wiping out the best competition in the featherweight division just like that, had to really put him in a position mentally where he just felt untouchable. And that was the confidence and overconfidence really that carried into that fight. Now personally, in my opinion, I'm very happy that fight with RDA did not happen when Conor McGregor was in that state of mind. I'm glad that fight took place at 170 because if Conor McGregor would have gone into that fight with RDA, overconfident, underestimating RDA's abilities, calling himself essentially a bone version of Aldo, a guy that he knocked out in 13 seconds, if he thinks less of him, then he's expecting that fight to go easier. Now, I'm not saying that he would have lost a fight. I'm just saying that going into a fight like that with that mentality was probably not the best way to go. And in hindsight, having the fight play out on 170 would indirectly help Conor McGregor with his bulk up to the 155 pound division. But with that mentality going into a fight with Nate Diaz, in my opinion, Conor expected the same thing to apply to Nate Diaz which was really not going to be happening since Nate Diaz has always been a very great durable fighter at lightweight and if we're gonna have that guy fight at a higher weight class, let him not cut weight, that guy is just going to be very durable. And Conor was not ready for that. He was just unloading and unloading in the first round, just throwing shots out there, connecting, missing with others, but really he just overestimated himself and underestimated Nate Diaz's abilities. Ending up gassing himself out and losing by way of submission in the second round, Conor McGregor got a reality check that didn't really have any effect on his status in the featherweight division or his status in the lightweight division. But with that defeat, the plan of becoming a lightweight champion of the world was put on hold. People were just very interested in seeing a rematch between the two. How would Conor McGregor do on a full camp going into a fight prepared for Nate Diaz? And how would Nate Diaz do likewise? And we ended up seeing Conor McGregor who was better acclimated to the 170 pound division, who was also a lot more ready for Nate Diaz's style, Nate Diaz's durability. He goes in there, is able to drop Nate Diaz, which he was not able to in the first fight, and he was able to cruise to a decision victory over him. Now the original plan of becoming a lightweight champion as well continues. Why I'm talking about all of this will be very clear later on in the video. Now that Conor McGregor avenged his one and only loss in the UFC, which catapulted his popularity through the roof because, you know, who doesn't want to see a very successful, brash, outspoken fighter who just looks unbeatable get defeated, get humbled, get humiliated essentially. Now after all of that happened and Conor McGregor avenged his loss, he was just at an all-time high. And for him to go back to the original plan which was to fight for the lightweight belt and going into a fight with Eddie Alvarez at Madison Square Garden, just when MMA was legalized in the state of New York, Conor McGregor was able to headline that card. 
Not only was it a first time ever in New York, but it was also the first time ever we saw two UFC champions fight one another. And it would have been the first time if Conor McGregor was successful for a UFC fighter to hold two belts consecutively in the UFC. With the lessons learned against Nate Diaz by not overcommitting, not overthrowing, by respecting the opponent, Conor McGregor just had to learn new things and was just a way better fighter because of that loss. Plus, having fought twice at welterweight, his body naturally became bigger, which resulted with him becoming bigger at lightweight as well. Stronger, better, more efficient for a bigger weight class. So Conor McGregor goes into that fight and he just looks completely invincible. He just looked unstoppable. All the doubt that we had about Conor going into a fight with Nate Diaz where he looked human for once essentially. We forgot about all of that and we got put back in the same image that we had of Conor McGregor when he fought Jose Aldo all over again. Conor looked unbeatable, his best performance to date, invincible, capturing two world titles, the featherweight champion and the lightweight champion of the world the first time ever in the UFC. So what would be next now? What could Conor McGregor possibly do to outdo what he just did? Obviously, there were many challenges on the rise. One of them was Khabib Nurmagomedov, an undefeated fighter who many people spoke very highly of and rightfully so. He is the most dominant fighter that I've seen to this date in the UFC. His style has been unbeatable. But at that time, Habib only came off of a injury, defeated some unranked fighter, and beating Michael Johnson doesn't necessarily line you up for a title fight. And Conor McGregor said that he wanted to take some time off, and by time off he meant like about 6 months. And by the next year, he went into a fight with Floyd Mayweather. I just talked about how could he possibly outdo himself. Well, that is how he did it. Going into a fight with Floyd Money Mayweather, doing the biggest pay-per-view fight in history. After that fight, it was time for him to return to the sport of mixed martial arts. Now in the meantime, Conor McGregor had been stripped of his featherweight world title, only now having the lightweight world belt. And in the lightweight division, the only fight that would have to have him come back for and defend his world title against would have been the winner of Habib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson. Now we all know how that story goes. That fight never came to be. So Conor McGregor just happened to be sitting around and waiting and waiting and waiting. In the meantime, Habib Nurmagomedov became the UFC lightweight world champion by defeating Ally Quinta who was a replacement for Tony Ferguson because Tony Ferguson, unfortunately, the week of the fight had to pull out due to an injury. So once that happened, Happened. Once Khabib Nurmagomedov had some traction, had some consistency, became the world champion, and that was already a fight that was brewing. Khabib and Connor had a little altercation backstage. Khabib called him out at UFC 205, and really, Khabib was always associated with Connor McGregor's name. So when the day came, that was just a fight that needed to happen. Khabib Nurmagomedov, a fighter who was a superstar in his own right, now was just catapulted in popularity because of that incident. And now Connor McGregor, he had to fight him. If you're gonna go ahead and attack the bus, hey, now you have to go in there and fight him, which he did. He signed the dotted lines, the press conferences happened, and that was just a different breed in its own right. I mean, what happened in that press conference that was the most toxic, the most real, the most unusual press conference of all time? Insults from all angles. It just felt real. The whole world tuned in. And the same pattern applied here against Khabib Nurmagomedov. He went into that fight on the wave of defeating Nate Diaz, on the wave of completely destroying Eddie Alvarez. The image that we had of Conor McGregor in mixed martial arts was still that of the invincible, of the unbeatable. And that is the same aura Khabib Nurmagomedov had. So when these two polar opposites in style and personality collided, it was just the biggest fight in UFC history. The excellent striking phenom Conor McGregor versus the unbeatable grappler Habib the Eagle Nurmagomedov. What a fight. But going back to Conor McGregor's mentality, it was very clear that he did not think much of his opponent. He did not respect that unbeatable grappler Habib and that really showed in his performance. The same way that he didn't respect Nate Diaz, the same way that he just marched forward and he just threw all the shots that he just wanted to, that resembled in this fight as well. Coming forward recklessly, does not respect Khabib Nurmagomedov's grappling, tries to knee Khabib Nurmagomedov as he's shooting him for a takedown. And once Khabib had a hold of him, it was just a wrap. Nobody's getting up against Khabib. And in the second round, Khabib was able to land a devastating overhand right, take him down, put some serious ground and pound on him. It was just clear that Conor McGregor's chances of winning this fight were just diminishing with each second. And by the end of the fight, after being defeated by Khabib, Conor McGregor understood that he just had a reality check and he had to 
adapt, get better, fix whatever he did wrong, and come back better in a rematch against Khabib. The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed. Only the names. Now that Conor is defeated, his popularity rises once again because who just doesn't want to see Conor McGregor lose? And fighting Conor McGregor does not necessarily make you popular. Defeating Conor McGregor will make you popular. And going into a fight, Habib's name was already very big amongst MMA fans. By beating Conor, now he's just known around the world. In other words, Habib is now on that level as well. And following the fight, Conor McGregor stated that he is willing to fight whoever is necessary for him to get another title shot. And really, the lightweight division has been a very funny division since. Tony Ferguson, who is logically the next guy above him, was unfit to fight and he was scratched off the table. And seemingly everybody else in the division was moving around Conor McGregor. They were fighting one another and really there was no real contender for Conor McGregor to go in there and fight yet again. So he tried to go in there and fight the hottest prospect in the lightweight division, Donald Cerrone. Unfortunately, the UFC wanted Conor McGregor to be a co-main event, which is really a questionable move. Understandably so, Conor McGregor declined. By declining that fight, Cerrone being the fighter that he is, he wants to be always fighting. Goes in there and fights Tony Ferguson, the guy above Conor McGregor. So what can Conor McGregor do at this point? He cannot really go in there and fight anybody below him, can he now? Now that Donald Cerrone has lost, that fight also subsequently lost its steam. So if Conor McGregor wants to earn a shot at the title again, he has to only fight Tony Ferguson. And currently, Tony Ferguson, he seems to be not willing to fight anybody else but the winner between Habib Nurmagomedov and Dustin Poirier. So yet again, the smartest move for Conor McGregor to make is just to wait around and see how the fight between Dustin Poirier and Habib will play out. If Habib Nurmagomedov wins, then he's going to be fighting Tony Ferguson. And I highly doubt that Conor McGregor is going to be willing to fight Dustin Poirier who just lost. So Conor will probably have to wait around up until Tony Ferguson and Habib fight. Now that's assuming Habib Nurmagomedov wins. If he loses, then that opens up an immediate rematch for Conor McGregor at least. If Habib loses, Conor and Habib can have a rematch. And that is going to be one big fight. Make it even bigger. Slap on an interim title fight because, you know, it's the UFC in 2019 anyway. Let Dustin and Tony Ferguson fight it out and the two winners of each respective fight can fight for the world title. That is how I see it however. Either way, Conor McGregor is going to be fighting Habib Nurmagomedov whether it is in his next fight or the fight following that. I'm not sure who Conor has to fight to earn a title shot but currently in the state that the lightweight division is in, there is not really anybody else in the division that earns a title shot. So Conor might as well just sit around and wait. What else can he do really? So is Conor McGregor done? No, I don't think so. Not until he goes in there and fights Khabib again. He's currently in his physical prime and arguably at the highest of his popularity. And in my opinion, with the loss, he will come back better than ever before. But the end is very near guys. Whether it is in 2020 or 2021 or 22, I think we have to get ready to say goodbye to a great chapter in the UFC's history, which was the Conor McGregor era. But we're not there just yet. And as always, only time will tell how everything will be playing out. For now, this is just how I see it. But what do you guys see? Leave it all in the comment section down below. As always, I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later.